passage for today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 15, beginning in verse 5. Here's what the Bible says. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another, just as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. You know, there's a lot of things in life you get to pick. You can pick your spouse, you can pick your friends, and for most people, you even get to pick your career. But you don't get to pick your family. Like it or not, you're related to all those people who share your genealogy. And the best philosophy you can adopt for those really big family reunions is to just accept it. Those are the people you're related to, and that's just the way it is. You know, I've been doing some thinking about this, and I'm convinced that one of the reasons that family members seem to chafe on us more than other people is because we know they're linked to us in a physiological bond. We, we share the same genetic material. So when your Uncle Herod or your cousin Phoebe do something really stupid, well, there's a small subconscious part of you that worries you might be just as weird because you share the same genetic material. There's nothing worse than seeing your own negative traits come out in someone you're related to. And maybe that's why somebody else's weird Uncle Herod doesn't bother you as much as your own. And maybe that's why some of those people you go to church with bug you so much. You, you see, the family of God is the other group of people you don't get to pick. And maybe that's why some of them just rub your fur the wrong way. There's a part of you that's worried that if other Christians behave like them, people are going to start to think that you do too. Well, it's a natural fear. If the head elder is loud and obnoxious, are people going to think that you're like that too? If the guy sitting next to you in the pew has poorly developed hygienic skills, are you scared to invite your friends to church because they're going to think a little less of you? Well, that's where Paul steps up to the plate with some really good advice. Receive one another just as Christ also received us. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse 11, it tells us that Jesus Christ is not ashamed to call us his brethren. Now think about that for a moment. If anybody has the right to be ashamed of imperfect human beings, it's Jesus Christ. And yet he's proud to be associated with us. In fact, he chose to permanently identify with us as a human being. And the standard he expects of us is the same one he uses, acceptance. Don't forget, if you're perfectly honest, that you're not perfect company yourself, and yet Jesus still calls you brother or sister. And at the end of the day, if you're going to be like Jesus, he expects you to receive other people with the same graciousness he accepted you with. And passing on the grace that God has shown you to other people is also just a better way to live.